Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Cliff Backus, and this is your PushButtonStockTrading.com daily video market review weekend edition. Before we get started, I want to talk about three pieces of software that I find indispensable. I once had a friend for whom I have the utmost respect admonish me against shilling for the software companies. But I feel strongly that traders can and should benefit from highgrowthstock.com, freestockcharts.com, and marketsmith.com. So, shill I will. Let's start with Marketsmith. Marketsmith is a set of investment research tools for mastering the market, offering a set of extremely robust stock screeners, charts, and pattern recognition. More importantly, we use Marketsmith to generate our stock checklist, which we use to develop our universal watch list. Take a free trial of Marketsmith. Next, we have freestockcharts.com, which is a Warden Brothers product and has all the versatility of their TC2000 program on an a la carte basis. These are the charts we use in our daily video market review. I use the premium version, but they also offer an advertising driven free version. And lastly, highgrowthstock.com, HGSI. HGSI is a remarkably versatile product that I use for analyzing and screening data. The Spectrum Analyzer is an HGSI product, and you can get a one month free trial of highgrowthstock.com and you don't even need a credit card. And that's our commercial for this week. Much of what we do at Push Button Stock Trading is based in part or in full on William O'Neill's classic book, How to Make Money in Stocks. O'Neill utilizes the acronym CANSLIM to identify the important elements of what he's looking for in a trade. So let's take a quick look at that. The C in CANSLIM stands for current quarterly earnings and sales, and reminds us that we should be looking for stocks that have a minimum of 25% year-over-year increases in quarterly earnings and or sales, and preferably accelerating earnings or sales. The A in CANSLIM stands for annual earnings and reminds us that we should be looking for stocks that have an average of at least 25% annual earnings growth over the past three to five years. The N in CANSLIM stands for new, new products, new management, or perhaps new market conditions. The N reminds us that we need something new and exciting to sustain longer term profit. The S in CANSLIM stands for supply and demand and reminds us that we want to favor stocks that have an average daily volume of at least 500,000 shares and trade at least 140% of their average daily volume on the day that they break out. The L in CANSLIM stands for leader or laggard. It's important that we identify where the leadership in the market is. We'll come back to that in a little bit. The I in CANSLIM stands for institutional sponsorship and reminds us that we want to find stocks that the institutional or professional fund managers are accumulating. And finally, the M in the CANSLIM acronym stands for market and reminds us that According to research, 75% of all stocks will follow the market. It's critical for our success that before we begin trading, we understand the current trend in the market. Okay, as we noted, the L in CAN SLIM stands for leader or laggard. It's important that we identify where the leadership in the market is. To that end, we use HGSI, High Growth Stock Investors Spectrum Analyzer, to identify the market leadership on a daily basis. So let's get started with that. Friday, of the top 100 most powerful stocks in the most powerful industry groups, a whopping 42 were from the real estate investment trust industry. Four came from entertainment content, four from defense primes, four from packaged foods, and rounding out the top five, we had four stocks from the beverage industry. We've been seeing a lot of real estate investment trust recently. We've been seeing a little bit of beverage and packaged foods. These may be good places to look for leadership in this market. Start today by taking a look at the Russell 2000. Russell yesterday closed higher. It closed right at the top of its daily trading range, but note how the high yesterday was lower than the high of the prior day. 
and the low Friday was lower than the low of the prior day. So we've done nothing to mitigate the downtrend, this downtrend that we've been seeing over a short-term basis in the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, as we've been noting recently, I believe is a key to the market going forward. The Russell right now is clearly in a short-term downtrend. We'll see if we can pull out of that. Right now, the Russell is bracketed by support down here in the 1079 area and resistance up here in the 1140 range. Let's see what the NASDAQ composite's up to today. But before we do that, stocks finished modestly higher on Friday on weaker trade. Friday was a refreshing change for the bulls, which had been dealing with a lot of market uncertainty and extremely high distribution lately. While both the S&P and the NASDAQ lost distribution days due to age, we no longer count distribution if it's a month old. Our distribution count remains stubbornly high, with eight days in the past month on the NASDAQ and seven on the S&P 500. According to Investors.com, the current outlook in the market, the M in the CanSlim acronym, remains uptrend under pressure. Meanwhile, our market timing model is clinging to a buy signal for the S&P while the NASDAQ is on a sell signal. The buy signal on the S&P indicates that conservative traders can buy, but we shouldn't be increasing margin at this point. A sell signal on the NASDAQ indicates that aggressive traders should be off of margin and can sell short. We, can, we should sell any long position that, if sold at current stop levels, would result in a loss. All stops should be at their tightest levels on all positions. Conservative traders may want to hedge their portfolios with contra ETFs, exchange-traded funds. Advancing issues outpaced decliners by about 5 to 3 Friday. The New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line continues to look healthy. New highs bettered new lows. According to our Ramosi ratio, large capitalization stocks edged small Friday, but small caps continue to outperform on a 10-day moving average basis. Bulls prefer to see small caps outperform. The market appears to be struggling to define short-term direction. While Friday indices closed higher, they did nothing to stall the short-term weakness in the market. We continue to see signs of strain in the market. The outsized distribution numbers recently and the sell signal on the NASDAQ are cause for concerns for the bulls. This is a good time to reduce or eliminate any remaining margin in your portfolios. Be careful and keep your stops at their tightest levels. Okay, on Friday, the NASDAQ was up 19.07 points or 41 uh, four tenths of a percent. We closed at 47.36, closed right at the high for the day, which is encouraging to the bulls, but note that the high for the day yesterday was below the high of the prior day, and the low of the day on Friday was below the low of the prior day. And so, again, we've done nothing to mitigate this downtrend in the NASDAQ, this short-term downtrend in the NASDAQ. Trading volume on Friday was higher than the prior day and was above average, giving us an accumulation day sort of cold comfort. For you followers of William O'Neill, we are in a market, I'm sorry, we are in an uptrend under pressure. We've been in uptrend since February 18th. Notice that over the weekend, we lost this distribution day. We've lost two distribution days in the past couple of trading sessions, but we still have eight distribution days on the NASDAQ, and we have this cluster of distribution in the past three weeks. That's the reason that the market is in an uptrend under pressure. This is a lot of distribution, and it's cause for concern for the bulls. Right now, our market timing model on the NASDAQ is on a sell signal. A sell signal indicates that aggressive traders should be off margin and can sell short. We should sell any long position that if sold at current stop levels would result in a loss. 
All stops should be at their tightest levels on all positions. Conservative traders may want to hedge their portfolios with contra ETFs. The NASDAQ is bracketed by resistance up here in the 4900 area and support down here in the 4506 range. Let's see what the S&P 500 is up to. Friday, the S&P was up 6.51 points or 0.32%. We closed at 2057. Notice how we came down. We tested support down here in the 2400 area and held. The S&P closed at the top of its daily trading range, which should make the bulls happy, but like the Russell and the NASDAQ before it, the S&P had a lower high and a lower low on Friday, which does nothing to ease bears, I'm sorry, which does nothing to ease bulls concerns. The S&P traded higher volume than the prior day, giving us a, an accumulation day. S&P remains in an uptrend under pressure. We have seven distribution days over the past month, in spite of losing another distribution day over the weekend due to age. Right now our market timing model is on a buy signal, which indicates that Conservative traders can continue to buy. I wouldn't be buying at this point, I don't believe, but I would continue to hold on to any positions that we currently have. The S&P right now appears to be bracketed by support down here in the 2044 area. That support, I think, becomes fairly critical. Were we to break below that, we have minor support at our 200-day moving average. Resistance is up here in the 2116 range. Let's take a look at some stocks that we may be interested in watching, but before we do, just a note. All of the individual stocks that we talk about in our video market reviews are from our universal watch list. To qualify for our universal watch list, a stock has to have satisfied at least 72% of our stringent technical and fundamental criteria and continue to satisfy at least 62%. Out of our trading universe of over 7,000 stocks, there are generally only about 50 to 90 stocks that meet these strict criteria and make our universal watch list. These are the only stocks we review in our daily video market review, and for the most part, they're the only stocks that we use in our trading strategies. That noted, we have quite a few stocks that qualify for our watch list this week. That actually may be a good sign for the bulls. We see quite a few stocks that are setting up in recognizable chart patterns. I'm going to run through them fairly quickly here. The first is Sabre Corporation. Sabre provides end-to-end -end technology solutions to a broad range of travel suppliers and buyers located around the world. Note that we've expanded our chart out. Generally, we look at a six-month chart. We're looking at a one-year chart right now. Sabre seems to be putting in this really kind of ugly-looking cup with handle. Notice how we have five days down in the handle. Volume seems to be drying up in the handle. While it looked solid, fairly solid, on the right side of the base, Keep in mind that our market timing model on the NASDAQ is on a sell signal. Sabre may be of interest to both conservative and aggressive traders here. Next stock we have is LGI Homes. LGI is currently working on this first stage cup with handle base with a pivot point in the 2977 area. LGI gets a 68% checklist rating right now and may be of interest to conservative and aggressive traders. I like LGI Homes. Of all of the home builders, this is uh, probably my favorite. LGI builds entry-level single-family homes in high-growth markets in Texas, Arizona, and eight other states. Worth taking a look at. Next, we have National Storage Affiliates. National Storage is a real estate investment trust, as we been noting real estate investment trusts have been really powerful recently. 
National owns, operates, and acquires self-storage properties within the top 100 U.S. metropolitan areas. The stock right now is working on this third stage base. A third stage base is a late stage base and is much more prone to failure. But National gets a 72% checklist rating. We have a pivot point of 2170. The 72% checklist rating makes the third stage base a little bit more palatable. Also, the fact that real estate investment trusts have been so strong recently also makes national storage an area that aggressive and conservative traders may want to take a look at. Next, we have Sherwin-Williams Company. Sherwin-William operates roughly 4,000 paint and coating stores in the United States, Canada, and the Caribbean, and expands its store base by about 2.5% a year. Sherwin-Williams is working on a first stage base with a pivot point up here in the 2435 area. Gets a 64% checklist rating. And notice how it broke out of its base back here in April and then fell back into it. Sherwin-Williams may be of interest to conservative traders if it was to break back above this 2435 area on at least 140% of average daily volume. Sticking with the home improvement theme, next we have Lowe's Companies. Lowe's is working on this cup and handle base with a pivot point up here in the 7763 area. Lowe's also gets a 64% checklist rating. Lowe's, as most of us know, operates Lowe's and Orchard Home Improvement and Supply Stores in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. May be of interest to conservative traders. Next, we have HD Supply Holdings. HD Supply Holdings was a spin-off from Home Depot, and it distributes products for the maintenance and repair infrastructure and power and specialty construction markets. The stock has been working on this kind of oddly shaped cup and handle base. It's a first stage base. HD Supply gets a 76% checklist rating and may be of interest to conservative traders. We have a pivot point for HD up here in the $35.81 area. HDS may be of interest to both conservative and aggressive traders. Keep in mind that our market timing model on the NASDAQ is on a sell signal and so if you do get into any of these positions you want to keep your stops at their tightest levels. Zimmer Biomet Holdings develops orthopedic and dental reconstructive implants, trauma products, and related surgical products. It gets a 64% checklist rating. It's been working on this very long-term cup with handle base. Recently broke out of this double bottom base right here. And so this is just a continuation of that earlier base. Zimmer has a pivot point in the 117.77 area and as I mentioned gets a 64% checklist rating. Zimmer would be of interest to both conservative and more aggressive traders. The final stock that I want to take a look at, Dicom Industries provides engineering, construction, maintenance, and installation services to telecommunications providers. Dicom's putting in this very oddly shaped cup with handle base. Notice how this handle is very low in the base structure. That's a little bit of a cause for concern. Technically it's above the midpoint of the base and so it does qualify as a cup and handle. This is a first stage base and DICOM gets a 68 percent checklist rating. Our pivot point is at $73.18. Notice how the stock on the right hand side of its base has not been particularly powerful. 
we want to see a lot more accumulation on the right side of the base. You want to be a little bit careful with DICOM, but DICOM may be of interest to very aggressive traders as well as more conservative traders. As I've been noting, keep in mind that our market timing model on the NASDAQ is on a sell signal, and so we want to be very conservative in any of the positions that we take at this point and keep our stops at their tightest levels. That's about all I have for today. If you want to talk about any of the stocks mentioned today or any of our market strategies, please feel free to give me a call, drop me an email, or make an appointment. Come by the office, see what we're up to. Contact information is on the home page. Please take a minute to go to our subscription page and subscribe to Push Button Stock Trading. You can also follow us on Twitter at Push Button Stock. Again, my name is Cliff Backus. That's your daily video market review. Have a safe and profitable day. Keep your stops in place, and I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay tuned for our important disclaimers. All the best. Disclaimers. Push Button Stock Trading Video Market Review is produced and edited by Clifford B. Backus. Mr. Backus is a Senior Vice President of Investments, Technical Analyst, Portfolio Manager, and Partner with the investment firm of O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated. Video Market Review is produced solely for the benefit of our clients, friends, and colleagues. Anything written, stolen, and or plagiarized in this publication is done without malice. Further, the analysis and opinions expressed in this publication are strictly those of the editor and not of O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated, its affiliates, subsidiaries, or any of the officers or employees of O'Hanison Liqueurs Inc. On that note, we submit the following. The analysis, calculations, and evaluations presented herein are based on data and assumptions O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated believes to be accurate. O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated makes no representation that such analysis or calculations are accurate or that such valuations represent levels at which actual trades may occur. This report has been prepared from original sources except where otherwise noted and data we believe to be reliable. O'Hanison Liqueurs Inc., its affiliates and subsidiaries and or their officers and employees or their families may from time to time acquire, hold, or sell a position in the securities mentioned herein. Moreover, opinions may differ from one entity to the next. If we are used in connection with the purchase or sale of any security discussed in this report, we may act as principal for our own account or as agent for both the buyer and the seller. Push Button Stock Trading is dedicated to the education of friends, clients, and paid subscribers. Push Button Stock Trading is an information service only. The information provided herein is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell stocks of any kind. Push Button Stock Trading is created to aid subscribers in making informed investment decisions based wholly or in part on technical analysis. It's possible that at this time or some subsequent date, the editors of Push Button Stock Trading may own, buy, or sell the investments presented. All investors should consult a qualified professional before making any investment. The information provided has been obtained from sources deemed to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed as to the accuracy or completeness. The editors of Push Button Stock Trading make every effort to provide timely information to subscribers, but cannot guarantee specific delivery times due to factors beyond our control.